What holds us back? Well, I think what holds us back from courage is the present, what we're facing now. Most people will not walk into their future because of what they're facing now. Either the good of the now, they're so enamored with the present success that they won't look to the future. And friends, I want to tell you, while we're grateful for our history and for our present, we've got to be people who are future focused. But perhaps the fear of the now, the present, that holds us back from being who God's called us to be and from being courageous. There is no future in our past. While we have a history, our future is not in it. And so I want to just say what will hold us back is the present. Don't let the present determine the future. Let's look to what God's called us to. Even some of the battles we might have lost, the future belongs to the Lord. And if we're on His side, we can't lose battles. We can only win them. We might have some setbacks, but we can't lose if we're on the side of what God's called us to and what He's, what he's doing and we're backing Him. So what holds us back is the present. Secondly, another thing that holds us back is being pragmatic. I've been talking a lot about this because I think a lot of guys are making pragmatic decisions even in this um, coronavirus downturn where we're stuck and we're housebound and we're making decisions for the church. But it's a pragmatic approach. We're looking at observation and we, we, we're making decisions out of observation rather than out of revelation. I want to challenge you and I that we've got to go to God. We've got to hear God on the decisions of what we're implementing and what we're doing. It's not we're just learning from others. Yes, learn from others. But be careful. That we're not being pragmatic. You cannot. We cannot approach our future in God and be a courageous people if we are uh, um, um, approaching our future pragmatically. There is no future in pragmatism. It's in Him. Now, I'm not saying we have to be stupid, but God's not in the pragmatic things. God's a God who wants to speak and give us strategies and And so just be careful. I believe if we live with borrowed truth, which many of us unfortunately do, we lead from from observation. And that causes us actually to approach the future pragmatically. If we don't have revelation, if we're borrowing truth from others, then everything we do is out of observation, which forces us to approach the future pragmatically. But when we have revelation... When we're hearing God and responding, friends, then we're approaching the future the way God intended us to approach it. And to be honest, that's what gives us courage in a time and a season like we're in right now. Another thing that holds us back is being passive. You cannot be bold. You cannot be uh, courageous by being passive. Now, I'm not saying we should go and do our thing, but I am saying we've got to stir ourselves up and we've got to, we've got to in good times and bad times, be front-footed and and, and praying and trusting and advancing. The kingdom is about advancement, not about holding ground. It's about taking ground. And so if the devil, I believe, can't discourage us with hardship, he will try to distract us with ease. But ultimately, we get too busy being passive. And I'm telling you, friends, there's no future and there's no courage in being passive. Another thing is people pleasing, which is probably one of the biggest challenges to true courage, is that we're too busy trying to please people that we've actually begin to offend God. That we are more about pleasing people than we are about pleasing God. I mean, think about that for a moment. It's so easy to fall into that trap. But how stupid is that? Forgive my candidacy, candidacy, whatever that is. Just understand how silly that is, that we care more about what people think than what it is that God's called us to. I don't know. I think we're going to have to shift our understanding back to the revelation of we're here to please God, not please people. If you are people pleasing, please know this, that when you get back to what God's called you to do, which we have to do if we're going to be courageous, the people you've tried to please are going to eventually go anyway because you can't please God and man. Now I'm not saying like make it hard for people, but why do we even play and entertain people pleasing? Because the moment we get back to that, what God's called us to, people go... You can't serve God and man. You've got to choose. That's what Paul says in Galatians chapter 1. If I was still trying to win the approval of man, I could not be a servant of Christ. And that's still true today. So just, if we begin to please people, become people pleasers, friends. Honestly, there's no courage that's going to hold us back. And we're no longer living in the commands of what God's called us to. Two more, three more, and I'm done. Impatience. You know, we, we somehow equate courage with patience, impatience. Like if we're courageous, we just go do our thing. I want to tell you, part of being a courageous people is waiting for God to tell. Waiting for God to do. And there's many stories in the Bible of those who stepped out without hearing God or too soon. And we see the disaster. Even in the obedience of God, if we're not waiting for the timing of God, 
we're not going to be successful. And so again, friends, courage, you sometimes need more courage to be patient than you do to just go do your thing and hope God's in it. And so impatience is one of the killers and destroyers of courage. And so we can't be impatient. God's timetable, best way to deal with impatience is to be a prayer because then God puts you on His timetable and you get to perceive what God's doing and He sets His agenda in your heart. And the timing means everything. So if you're impatient because you're not praying enough, go and be with the Father, spend time with Him and get His agenda. But impatience... Another thing is pursuing the wrong things. And again, we all would agree with this truth, but how true is it in our lives if you just look at what you're doing right now? I I guarantee that many of us are pursuing the wrong things and we can't be courageous if we're pursuing the wrong things. It's got to be back to what God, not good stuff, no, what do people, one of us, what's God called us to? Focus on those things, pursue the right things and we'll have courage and we'll have victory. And the last thing is, there's no personal revelation. It comes back. We can talk corporate and big picture. We can talk all of us involved and everyone together standing side by side. And that is a great picture and that is true. But this truth comes back to personal revelation. My revelation will determine what God's called me to do and how long I will sustain it. It's not based on those cheering me or those encouraging me. It's based on my revelation. And when you lose or don't have personal revelation... I believe we're in danger of never being able to fulfill what God has for us. But also we'll never. We can try and live out these commands that I've given, that we've talked through. But if you haven't got personal revelation, if you're not owning it, and I do believe, friends, if we're not begging God to reveal more of Himself to us, that's where we get our our faith from. That's where we get our courage is the bigness of God. And that comes from the place of uh, being on our knees before Him. A personal revelation. Are you still asking and begging God for revelation? And so, again, these are many truths, and I know that I've thrown them a lot out there. There's a lot more, um, but I'm trusting it will just stir us to go and study the Word again. But also, friends, I'm telling you, I believe this season requires courage. It's not being strong in ourselves. It's being strong in God and keeping our, this, these focuses true and making sure that these commands are not just commands we read, but we're living by. Let's go be courageous. Let's go and take ground. Let's go and take cities. Let's go and take regions. Let's go and get the job done. Let's make sure we're still on His side. And let's do it from a place of worship in holy awe and reverence to this great God. Because what we're doing is significant if it is what God's called us to. And that matters most. doesn't matter what people say. So God bless you. Be strong and courageous. We look forward to seeing you again. Take care.